and from our mentors during this remote learning month. We are recording this today, everybody. So um, Adam will go ahead and drop in our whole YouTube channel. We've been dropping those in there so you can go back through and relive the magic. Hello, Eveline from Switzerland. Good evening. Thanks for coming. Tetris is your all-time favorite, so I love it. Hey, again, John, great mentors in the house tonight. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started because we have lots to do today um, with eSports as our topic. And I'm just going to go through a quick scan through. I've got a couple of fun side noises of children. We love those, but we'll go ahead and mute that up. Um, welcome all. We've got the end of Remote Learning Month. Thanks for hanging out with us. We have none other than our amazing presenter, Stephen Reed. Stephen, in case we have new folks, did you want to give your 30 second spiel of Stephen in the world of Minecraft to everybody? Be sure to yeah. tweet him, everybody, and give him a hello and thank you for sharing multiplayer with us this week. I'll put in Stephen Reed. I'll just put my uh, my Twitter into the chat and you can come there. Uh, and tweet me. Um, so yes, so hi. So for anybody who isn't familiar with who I am, my name is Stephen Reed. I live in Scotland, but I've been working around the world for 20 years to use technology to teach everything from podcasting and animation and filmmaking to artificial intelligence, coding, uh, and of course, games-based learning. I use over 140 games to teach in over 70 countries around the world. And I use technology for what is primarily and really very importantly for me, uh, relevant, meaningful, impactful learning. Um, I don't ever believe in technology for techn technology's sake and will quite quite easily tell you not to use a given technology um, where I don't think it's appropriate. And I think that um, one of the most powerful tools is that games-based learning. And I've been sort of pioneering that for, for a long, long time. Um, and everything from Little Big Planet, Tomb Raider, Assassin's Creed, even Commodore 64 titles, um, and Amiga titles as well to teach children how to use off-the-shelf games to learn. And Minecraft stands as the pinnacle of that of, of that that genre for me, that 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 learning um, experience for me. And I've used Minecraft to do everything from basic curriculum, um, math, science. Uh, I say basic, I mean standard curriculum, um, core mathematics, core literacy, the sciences, etc. I've also used it to do what we call teaching the tough stuff, which is things like gender equality, race relations, the refugee crisis, you know, the stuff that's difficult to talk to children about, but we can do within games. And then also esports, which is what we're going to be showing you tonight. Thanks, Stephen. Huge to have you here. We've also got some other Minecraft folks in the house. If we can steal them to give a quick tiny hello. Allison, did you want to say hello to everybody? And our introduction question was your favorite video game character of all time. My one. Oh, I, I saw Allison is on our team here. Allison, are you there? Do you want to say a quick hello? She might be on mute. How about Adam? I see Adam's in our in the house too. Do you want to say hello? Hi, oh, there's Allison. Hi. Hi. Sorry, that took me a minute. Um, I don't know about all time. I need longer to think about that. But I would say my current favorite video game character is the awesome fighter that I've got in Minecraft Dungeons. My husband and I are having a blast playing on Minecraft Dungeons and making our way through through the levels there. So good to meet everyone. Thanks for coming. Thanks, Allison. As our executive producer, really stoked as she works really hard to make things like multiplayer um, work as good as it can for all of our teachers in the house. I also see Adam Tratt. Some of you might have worked with him as building amazing lessons and learning programs. Adam, want to say hi and tell us your favorite video game character of all time? Hello. Um, well, let's see. I would have to go back to Miss Pac-Man, I'm afraid. Uh, she was a feminist hero of mine mm -hmm. and uh, she broke barriers, broke the glass ceiling, if you will. So I'll <laughs> go with that. Anyway, my name is Adam Tratt. I, uh, I work on the learning programs team. So I get to work with uh, some of the most creative people in the world, people like Steven um, and others who, who make these amazing learning experiences for students everywhere uh, that teach everything from early education math all the way up to AP chemistry. Um, we have a library of a thousand lessons, almost a thousand lessons. Some of them are created by educators like you, um, and uh, and we curate and host those lessons in the game and on our website. I'm so happy to be here, and thanks everyone for uh, for being here too. Thanks, Adam. 
our other Adam from our support team will drop in a link to those lessons. Remember earlier this week we talked about what is your objective. So as we start playing today in an eSports, keep that in mind and maybe you want to go lesson shopping after today to get your objective that you might use for, um, for your own eSports that you might have coming out. And we also have Kyle and Carrie um, who are helping out today as well in the chat. Um, so please do give them a hello and they'll be sharing uh, out some resources. Thank you to all of our Minecrafters joining us today. Here's a quick recap. Remember, we are focusing on multiplayer this week, right? We've got one world, we've got an amazing host, Steven, and then all of you beautiful folks will join us in that world today as we all join under one tenant, one domain, uh, and try to battle it out for an esports here by the end of the hour. But remember, you can always start just like we did with New York, with Broward County in the last two weeks, one world, one challenge, send it out to all 30 of your students and they can turn 30 worlds back into you, 30 Flipgrid videos, 30 screenshots, right? We're just showing this nice spectrum that you can do as a teacher with Minecraft. After Friday, we'll be sending you a survey and a chance to get your own certificate and badge for becoming a remote learning master with Minecraft education. Uh, and this week, we started out with Stephen telling us what is multiplayer, right? You went in a world, watched him and I and me terribly make some symmetry. Uh, and then we looked at the technical pieces on Tuesday. All of you should be comfortable now with finding your IP address, if you're a host, setting up port forwarding. Remember, when you go back to school, or if a lot of you in the chat shared with us, you actually are back to school, as long as you're on the same network, you won't need to do a lot of those steps. But if you are brave like Karen and you tried that out yesterday, it works with just a few couple of steps. Adam's going to drop in the uh, remote learning guide for us that'll walk through step by step um, again. And if you want that one to one help, we have mentors like John and Braun on the call who will try to set you up one on one to get through those steps to help you be confident with your next lesson um, that you might be doing remote learning. Yesterday, you got to see what do we actually do with it? And some of us got in the world. Today, we're going to get even more people in the world with esports. Um, and tomorrow is collaborative world building. Let us know if you have any questions in the chat about that, that whole flow. And Adam, of course, dropped in our YouTube playlist that goes back in time for you to watch some of these other steps. Yesterday, Stephen also walked us through the lesson planning steps that you have to think through as a teacher, right? Finding mm -hmm. your world, setting up those management functions, right? What kind of world do you want? What are some of those uh, constraints you want to put on it? What's that objective? What do I want them to do? Are we building symmetry? Are we making our own um, classrooms? What do I want them to do when they're there? We also talked about the logistics. How many hosts? Is it just going to be one? Am I going to set up student leaders who have to be hosts as well? All sorts of logistics here. Today, we're just going to have one. Steven's going to be our host, and we're all going to join under our Minecraft Education Edition tenant and battle it out. And then you want to think, how long am I going to have this lesson last? Stephen, we'll give it a go for like maybe a 10 minute round or so, and then mm -hmm. we'll try to get a second round of folks in. And then Stephen's also going to talk about how might we assess this at the end of it? M might we take a screenshot? Might we actually export the world itself to showcase all of the great stuff? Might we do a Flipgrid walkthrough? Um, so that's the flow of our esports lesson today. I did want to also, let me shoot through here. Here's our assessment things that we'll walk through at the end of it, right? What are the ways that we might want to capture esports learning? Uh, but do set yourself up for the workshop today. Go ahead and download if you're brand, brand new. Most of us are all repeats throughout the month here. So you should have Minecraft edition, education edition, uh, downloaded, opened up, logged in. You're going to open it up so that you have me and Steven and the game side drop those fun screenshots on hashtag minecraft edu we love seeing what your what your setup looks like steven and i get jealous looking at some of your monitors some of you have bigger monitors and better chairs than steven and i uh, and then if you need help during this workshop you need to go all the way back and can't log in 
Adam, Carrie, Kyle, they're standing by. Um, if you put workshop in this ticket, they're going to get back to you right away and it'll be a little bit easier than the chat. Um, but of course, you can also drop any questions you have for Stephen and I in the chat and we'll get to you as well. But if you have something a little more technical, go ahead and make a ticket request. Mm -hmm. And also a quick plug for our community hub has all of the great articles. If you're using a Mac or a Chromebook and have very specific questions, uh, drop the you can find articles about that and talk to other mentors and community members in our support forum. OK, Stephen, that's our housekeeping. Before I get you going, I do want to, if you want to get us set up, then I have all 30 of our tenant accounts on a spreadsheet that I'm going to ask everybody to actually come into my shared um, spreadsheet to log into. Before we do that, do you want to set the stage for our lesson today and then and then tee it back over to me when you're ready to have people join us? Sure, absolutely, because awesome. I want to do an introduction to eSports, of course, of and the course. materials that sit behind it. So let's do that for the moment. All right, I've unshared Great. my screen. If you want to share yours back again, um, take us I'll, away. Thanks again, Stephen. I'll do exactly that. Thank you. OK, so uh, where are we? Minecraft. Uh, save and exit. OK, so what I want to start with is the concept of eSports. And when we developed the eSports worlds for Minecraft and significantly eSports and Minecraft have mixed in the past, which is why we decided to take this route. Um, and yet, East Minecraft uh, and esports actually work phenomenally well together as a partnership. Um, and if you're sort of thinking, well, I know esports. Um, esports is, you know, Fortnite and Counter-Strike and um, Dota, and there's a whole bunch of s specific esports games. Esports isn't actually those games, and it isn't just that esports is the concept of organized collaborative competitive play digitally and so if we can consider minecraft as the pinnacle of our opportunity to teach a whole variety of things in the classroom then so too can we create and we know that it's collaborative it's competitive it's um, creative and it's also play then it belongs right there in the arena of esports and so what i started to do was look at not just what those worlds were, but why, let me just see, if, there we are, why those worlds, uh, or, or, or why those worlds would be important in the classroom. Um, and coming from an education perspective, it wasn't enough for me to say, hey everyone, we're just gonna take Minecraft and we're gonna turn it into esports. So what we did was we set about developing a teacher guide. I'm just gonna do this, it's, it's in OneNote um, and it's freely accessible and I'll give you the link in the chat shortly. Um, in fact, yeah, I'll just do that just now so that you could be looking at this as we go along. Um, back to Teams. Let me just pop it into the chat for you for the moment. Sorry, just. Forward slash esports framework. Sorry, all, you, you, all you're going to hear is my clicking of my keyboard. Check this out while we're we're moving along um, and, and know that you have that. It's fully accessible for you. But in the meantime, um, there's a welcome page and it has the contents and, and acknowledgements and so on. But if we move to the first content section, you'll see that we've actually broken this down to what's called what is esports. And that's really critical because when we talk about esports, I talk about esports is as and for learning. And most people think about esports as a sport that you may or may not play digitally as you know so for example because of lockdown a lot of people have moved to esports from traditional sports but actually people who play digital esports see that as a kind of a, a crossover and almost an invasion of a space that the traditional sports people don't belong in so there's a real conflict and we need to understand that conflict as we go through it but then also i also face um, where teachers will say, but it's not, you know, esports is not that popular. It's kind of like, I even had one teacher say to me recently, that's what the geek kids do, right? Which was unbelievable to me. But anyway, whereas in fact, if we look down at this statistic here, projected esports viewers, not players, the viewers for esports in the United States in 2021 will outstrip every other sport except the NFL. Now, Americans watching this will understand quite the impact that that means because you guys love your sports. And they project that by 2025, esports will have overtaken the NFL and will be the largest 
watched sport in the world. And so not only do we need to consider as educators that this is what our children enjoy doing and want to do and we can help them to learn through it. This is what they're watching. This is their entertainment. This is the world they live in. This is just, these are the leagues they're watching. They're not watching NBA, they're watching esports. And so we need to become comfortable with that as a culture. And so we do that. Well, what is it? Is it a game or a sport? And we help you to understand that. Play in itself is either spontaneous or organized, non-competitive or competitive, intellectual or physical. And esports can be all of those things. If we go into esports as culture, what does it look like as culture? Where did it start? Where did it come from? What was the revolution? And this is the other interesting thing here. If we take this graphic, um, teachers will quite often say to me when I'm talking to educators, they'll quite often say, yeah, but it's just a bunch of players. Right. And I say, actually, for, in order for esports to be successful on any level, and of course, the bigger you get, the more this is prevalent. But we need streamers, software developers, theory crafters, analysts, general managers. Someone needs to do IT support, marketing, business developers. There's usually a website attached. Someone's doing journalism. And if and if we look at this as teachers, we can just see curriculum and career written all over it. That we will we are teaching journalists that we that don't know they're going to be journalists yet. We're teaching coaches and analysts and IT support that don't know that they're going to be coaches, analysts, and IT support yet. But they will be. There's entrepreneurs, organizers, strategists and content creators. And so we help you to kind of look through that and figure out what is it? Where does this as a culture fit into my uh, to fit into my education? And then we have esports as organized play. How is it governed? You know, there's there's the World Esports Association, the global sports organization for all the national and regional esports federations in the states. It's huge. Um, and then just I'll do this on the first one so I don't have to do it on the rest. This is fully academically referenced. So we wrote this over eight months. It was actually closer to 11 months, but eight if we concentrate on exactly sitting down and fully writing it. And we wrote it with academics as well as coders, parents, artists. This was written by a conglomerate of people who fully referenced academically. So if any of you are, if you're trying to do this in school and someone in your leadership says, hang on a minute, where did you get that statistic from? Well, we got it from eSports Earnings. Here's the link. Or we got it from Critical Hit Gaming. Here's the link. Um, or the British eSports Association and so on. So it's, it's ed researched. And so you can use this to back up everything that you're trying to say about esports in your school. But then we move to the next section where it's an introduction to game based learning because we're not just doing esports, we're doing esports as learning. And so what is digital games based learning? Strategy, re strategy, reason and ju judgment, communication, new media literacy, peer interaction and virtual collaboration. All of these things fall under the digital games based learning umbrella and then what we help you to understand is well what is the pedagogy of play situated learning self-directed learning mastery of learning and how digital games and esports can help you with all of these things including the uh the barriers what are the, what's the concern too much screen time what does it look like in balance here's a statement what's your role as an educator you're right, violent or addictive behaviour is a concern. Here's how we can deal with it. Games are isolating and promote laziness and introversion. People think that. Let's deal with that. And we're not saying it's not true for some kids. What we're saying is it's largely not true if we do this correctly. Then we go to benefits of digital games-based learning. We focus on so things like cognitive function, motivation, social and emotional skills. These are all benefits. How do we, how do we uh, make those uh, happen? And esports is the doorway. Not even Minecraft alone, but something like esports, where you know you have that global multi-million uh, viewership, that can help us with that door. What do we mean by digital games-based learning? And this one's actually fascinating. This this one here. A lot of teachers will say, I'm a, I, again, I told you I've been doing this for 20 years, and teachers will always say, they were saying it with Command and Conquer and Tomb Raider, they're saying it now with Minecraft. 46%, sorry, 43% at the bottom here of non-game using teachers will say there's insufficient time. 3% more of game using teachers will say, we know there's not enough time, but the rewards outweigh the sacrifice in time. 41% say it's going to cost too much. 44% know it does cost too much, or it doesn't cost too much, but they know it costs money. They, but the rewards to their attainment, their, uh, their, their uh, roll call, their, their attendance, their social and emotional skills, the success this year in mathematics or STEM, it 
outweighs the cost they spent on making it happen. Lack of tech resources, similar number, not sure where to find uh, quality games. So lots of teachers will say, I'm not doing this because I'm in that pur purple category. And then I introduce them to colleagues of mine who are in the pink category and say, you are not alone. Um, digital games-based learning and assessment. So we take you through assessment rubrics and how you can look at points and scores, essential questions, quizzes while you're doing it, and so on. And we help you to understand how to structure assessment around about the games and what types of games. Then we look at esports in the curriculum and we've given you a model for five separate curriculum, 21st century skills. So you might be thinking, look, my focus this year is on 21st century skills and the assessment of that across my, uh, my curriculum. I want to help children to explore ways of thinking, ways of working, skills for living in the world and skills for work uh, and skills for, and tools for working. We will help you to map all of that, like social intelligence, design mindset, cross-curricular competencies, novel and adaptive thinking. We will map that to esports for you. And all you have to do is check out this resource and run with it. But someone else might be equally on this call thinking, actually, I'm doing STEM this year. How does that fit? We will do the same with STEM. We'll do the same with connected learning, social and emotional learning and digital literacies. You just have to pick what you want to focus on. Then we move to curriculum case studies where we help you to see three separate curriculum. The most impressive, I think, of all is the Practicum Vocational School in Finland run by an amazing educator called Carl Ogland, who has based his entire esports curriculum on not, not the sport, not the winning, not the cup, but a balanced life. His children have a curriculum of nutrition and communication and exercise workouts. They need to prove that they have slept a certain amount to be able to be fit for the team, fixed routines, structures in everyday life, be able to plan and be proactive, netiquette and understanding roles and responsibilities on the internet. If they can't do those things, they're not on the team. And he works with the parents to make sure that this is effective at home as well. And so it's just an incredible curriculum for getting children on the right path uh, but using esports. There's also English language arts and there's also Microsoft's own HSEL curriculum, um, which are fantastic and we help you with those. But then we dip into Minecraft as esports. So we take an introduction to, well, what is Minecraft? Why use Minecraft Education Edition? And then esports and Minecraft combined. So then we talk about, well, what does that look like? Things like Minecraft is a familiar digital environment for kids already. Minecraft is the ultimate tool for developing creativity and creative thinking. These are the worlds that we've developed and I'll, I'll show you those later. Getting started with Minecraft, that's your operating system, what it is you need, you know, what's the minimum requirement, classroom mode, Minecraft Education Edition accounts, how to log in, how to know that your account is legit, you know, um, uh, legitimate and going to work and so on and, and, and that kind of technical side. And then we have an eSports get setup guide. Here's where to download this. Here's where, you know, button by button, step by step, you can't get lost. Press play, click import, do this um, and you'll find it in there. And then, of course, we have the multiplayer setup, which is uh, a repeat of the stuff that we've done this week. And if you're ever in doubt, um, you know, I know the Minecraft Education Edition team have that fantastic resource, but you might already be in this one note and think, actually, how do I do that again? Just head over to the multiplayer setup section and it's all in there as a step by step guide and you can't get lost. Uh, and then the penultimate and actually technically the final, because the last one's just a playbook, we have how to build your esports team. So you don't know where to get started. You're watching this tonight and thinking, I really want to do this. We will help you do it. Start with your students, connect with colleagues, get focused, be strategic. And we help you. We take you through the entire process of being able to build your own team right through to designing your esports environment. Things like team spirit, ergonomics, you know, people don't consider it, but sitting for three hours in a competition on a wooden chair is nobody's idea of fun. So think about the ergonomics of the children's desks, of their chairs. Are they drinking enough water? Do you have the right technical setup? Do you have the infrastructure and so on? And all of this is, and including coaching, um, but all of this is set up to help you with that. Well, and then the final... Guide, Stephen. We've got some cool notes in the chat cool. right now. As you wrap this up, a yeah. question has come. How do you assess? And then I all, that's from Bradley. And then Luke all, also says this guide is so wonderful because he's about to have a parent night. And as you mentioned, when you open this guide up, 
you're uh, a lot of our teachers are getting questions from their parents who are playing their kids are playing all sorts of games mm -hmm. in esports manner so how fun that you might be able to equip them in a curricular setting with this so thanks luke for that question and thanks bradley for yours if you could um chat a bit to both assessment and then also um sharing this with parents yeah, so the assessment is really, the, the funny thing is people say you must be able to, like there must be a unique assessment model. And actually there isn't. Let me just go back to the original thing and we'll go up to where was it now? And, then, and how assessment connects to the winner, right? That's the hardest piece of how do you, and we'll look tonight as you walk us Oh, you mean game. assessing in how game, pick, yes. How do you pick a winner and then how do you also assess even if they don't win? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So of course, what we're looking at with this section, digital games-based learning and assessment is, you know, the genre, the games as assessment, and there's lots of games. That, I mean, games themselves are assessment. Like if you play From Dust, which is an amazing, you want to teach geography, play from dust from beginning to end and you'll you'll learn tectonic plate movement you'll learn volcanic uh, eruption um, and lava flow you'll learn um, springs you'll learn weather conditions it's incredible for geography and it is it was never designed to be an education tool but it ultimately is geography education and assessment in one so very often this is built in and then we can talk about formative for here we've got things like formative assessment video game and analog connecting the game to the broader learning context and we will help you with that but then also types so you might think okay i like to use points scores and stars or screen capture and annotations but you can't do that with games surely yes you can why wouldn't you be able to surely when you're doing games based learning practice you're still using essential questions with your kids or you're using review questions you still give them quizzes and exams and tests though right and so um i get them to design their own game guide or or do a review do a game review that's your assessment um get them to look at magazines of other game guides and game reviews and then or or or, or online uh, versions of such and so we help you with that and content provision developer summaries the mechanics of the game teaching and learning impact and assessment we take you through all of it. it's huge this it's absolutely huge um this <laughs> and so actually we have a model based on oblivion i don't know if you're familiar with the computer game oblivion but you can look at this entire case study of how oblivion can be used to map things like cognitive function creative problem solving efficiency um reading competency working memory it's all built in there in this in this case study so check that out. And then how do we start, Stephen? So they might, mm. uh, a lot of our teachers might be looking and thinking a league is a, is a quite a few steps away from me to, today. So like if we wanted to start with one simple game, get everyone playing, try to find our winner and, the, and then lead up to creating leagues and groups of our students, um, how might we start tonight with a simple game that we have multiple folks playing and trying to win tonight? How might that first step look? Yeah, so the first step is really um, get yourself, as I would imagine you do it on a, well, actually, if I use one of our one of our clients who's just recently finished an amazing esports league called the Kuro Clash, and they, when I first introduced this to them, they were like, how do you think we should do this? And I said, advertise it and see how many kids want to do it. And they advertised it. And within 24 hours, they had 2000 children say, yep. And they only put it out as an internal email to the like the, 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 the school system. And they had 2000 kids said, yeah, we'd love to do this. Now, 2000 is huge. And you might not want to do that first. What you might want to do is run it as a small club um, or you might want to run it as, you know, three teams of 10. And you maybe get the kids to do some sort of um uh, assessment, you know, not an assessment, but they might they might build something in Minecraft to prove that they can take they can take this on. You might have like a competency build, and they do it on, and they and that in itself is a competition, and they love it. And then once you've got them in there, we ran the whole thing through teams. So we got the kids into teams. We gave them their own channels. We assigned them a coach, which was one of the teachers that took part. And there was eight teachers involved uh, across the first league of Kuro. And now there's more going on forwards. And they ran the entire thing using just Minecraft and Teams. And because it was remote learning, they were all doing it in their homes. So they just kept a calendar. They sent invites. The children knew when to turn up. Um, and it was it was fantastic. And it's funny because I wanted to run one at two o'clock in the afternoon one day. And I said, I want to run this and I need to film it. And this little boy wrote to me by email and he said, excuse me, sir, I don't finish school until three. So I will not be able to attend or compete until after that time. <laughs> and I just thought, good on him. He's not skipping school to do esports because it is his esports. So um, and it is his education. So he knew that he just, you know, there's a time and you'll just need to wait for me. And so we did. We did it after three, which was lovely. Awesome. And so. 
Yeah, so I would start, I would recommend, don't start too small though, because esports is huge and it's designed to be huge, but just build the infrastructure you're comfortable with and maybe just run an initial competition using one of our maps. We've made seven, but just pick one and then maybe right. pick, a, pick a handful of teams. What map are we doing tonight? Well, let me just introduce you to what those teams are and what they look like. Am I still sharing? Yes, I am. And so we have released, there are more coming, but we've released for the moment what we call the make and model series, which is ultimately what Minecraft is. If we look at esports and the success of esports, uh, sorry, at this Minecraft and the success of Minecraft, we're looking at that thing I said in the beginning. It's collaborative, it's competitive, and it's creative, the three C's. And so if we look at esports, we want to look at them being able to collaborate. So we do it as teams compete so we do it as esports and create so we do it in minecraft that's my logic and it works and so uh, we have the make and model series and of the make and model series we have seven worlds we have busy bees set in a giant garden um in fact let me just quickly introduce you to the world so you can have a quick look because i've got them all sitting there and we might as well just have a look at them all and then i think what we'll do is as we go on you tell us what world you want to play in first so We've got Make and Model Busy Bees, which is set in a huge American yard. Um, I'm just going to let it render. And it's got flowers and flower beds and hedges. And there's a garden gnome and there's a white picket fence. And there's a baseball bat and a lawnmower and there's bees. And you compete as bees in this world. Um, two competing hives in this world. Then I'll introduce you to binary builders. This one's a lot smaller. And in this one, you're inside a giant computer with LCDs and uh, microchips and binary in the walls and cables and all sorts. And you're just inside a computer processor. And I'll show you what the rules are later. But for the moment, this is just to see if you want to do binary builders. This is very Tron-esque. Our third is Gold Rush based on the California Gold Rush. And it's basically a model of North and South California split by a river. And you start in a small Western town and you have the California Gold Rush and you have the competing areas where you are just two posses and you compete together on, the, you have a green team and so on. And you can see there that we have the Southern um, Anaheim-esque kind of look, and then we have Northern um, California. And it's just this lovely little space in the Wild West. Then I'm going to take you to what's next? Uh, 3D print. I'll do splat racers last. It's bonkers. Um, so in 3D print, you're inside a giant maker space with two huge 3D printers, always a green versus uh, yellow team. And then the scoreboard, etc., is on the blackboard behind. And we have a giant door and a giant window and a giant plant so that you can't see what the other team is building. And this one's called 3D print. And we have some 3D print models there. Then we have, I like this voting system. I like that you're getting to vote which one you want to play on first. Then we're going to go for the uh, Pirate Cove. And everyone, I've dropped in the link where you can find the lesson plans. There's a link to download these worlds. So after today, when we join Stephen's hosted world, your homework could be to try to download this and have a think about how you might have your students come and join and run this with you. And so make and model, this one is called Make and Model Pirate Cove, and it's a huge pirate island with a Tortuga style uh, village and then two giant ships on which we will, uh, we, we can compete, a green ship and a yellow ship. Actually, and this is really neat, actually, I'll show you what the kids have been doing on this one. I need to clear this one when we get in. But um, as you can see here, this was the green team who got seven points and that was the, the theme was build a pirate. Now I'm going to talk about the importance of the themes in the curriculum when we start building, but this was their pirate um, with an open chest and lots of parrots. And then this one over here, which was a little bit more sublime, was a parrot, uh, sorry, a pirate buried in the sand with his little torch and two parrots trying to rescue him. I have no idea. Children <laughs> build their own narratives and you can see the scoring system up there. So I'll just quit this one. And then two more to show you. The last, uh, the penultimate one is uh space race where you are inside a giant space dome on a moon and you are surrounded by planets so if we you're, this is us inside this dome and we're surrounded by planets if i make it time set one um you can see the planets outside so it's this giant there's a an ocean planet and a forest planet and there's a 
Tatooine style planet. Um, but if we go back to nighttime, um, 10, oh, doesn't really matter, but 15,000 will do. Um, it's actually you're inside on a giant moon um, and you have two competing um, space expeditions, if you like. And then finally, and I hope you're all telling me which one you prefer so far, although you, you might be waiting to see the last one. And the last one is called Splat Racers. And this one is a racing circuit in a fantasy world. Um, if we just go up here and then turn around and it's got fish, air breathing fish, giant mushrooms, rainbow volcanoes, butterflies and strange plants with a race course <laughs> that goes around it. I love so it. So you choose. Uh, drop, yeah, your, drop it in the chat, folks. Let's get it in. Which one? We want to put go back to the main screen. Let's give them their options. We got yeah, Splat. Options, Karen's please. voted for Splat. Tell you, oh, Busy Bees, we've got three, four. Oh, we have two Splats, five for Bees, six for Bees, seven for Bees. It's like Bees. I'm seeing a, a trending Bee. Last check, Tina's into Bees. Mm -hmm. Splat. We had, Splat was a good second, but I think we're on Team B. Oh, God, this is close. Nope, Bees, bees pulls ahead. Bees All right, let's it. do okay. it. Let's Beat do it. it. So what we're going to do is we're going to get, um, I'm going to jump in and I'm going to host. And then, Wendy, if you take care of the getting people logged in part. Yep. So um, let's, we'll review from last time. Remember everybody, um, and thank you, Adam and Kyle have been dropping in notes here. Remember, we all have to be on that tenant, right? So I'm about to share with you our Minecraft Education Edition tenant. I have demo accounts for some of you to join, and we'll try to we'll want to do we'll try to get two rounds in, Stephen, so we can try to get as many folks as possible. So we've got about 23 minutes left. I think we can do it and get yeah, some yeah. winners too. Um, so remember, you've got that. I do love that Kyle and Adam also shared the tip that. Uh, one, you could have uh, someone at your account make um, tenant accounts, right? If you wanted to have a league and maybe you're not all on the same tenant, you could create accounts for folks um, and have them join and students join for this. Or a lot of this magic stuff too, you could apply that build and pass magic, right? As well that we talked about. Um, this is really esports looking at this real time playing, but there are of course different options. Um, and then Stephen won't walk through it, but again, yesterday, remember he did do a couple of setups to make sure he could host with him and I being um, around across the world from each other. So Adam will drop that guide in again. So you remember those technical pieces that Stephen did. He's not going to do those again today because he did that yesterday. Um, so while he gets it all set up, he's getting the game ready for us. He's going to tell us the rules. I'm going to share my screen now, everybody. And and this again, we're looking at classroom management. How might you start to set up and get your students uh, logged in and ready to go in this world? So I'm going to drop a link in the chat, everybody. And I have a shared um, Excel spreadsheet that I want you to join. Here we go. Now you can see it on my screen. Oop, not that one. That's our sign up sheet. Don't look at that. Hang on. Let's pull up our. I'll, I'll start explaining what's going on in here. So mm -hmm. first things first, not only are we in this giant world, and by the way, there's things hidden around so you can send kids off to find a bird and an ant and a spider, and there's all sorts of, there's a grasshopper hidden somewhere. There's all sorts of creatures in here. But over here, we have a timer. This timer is designed to tick tock, tick tock until the time is up. And on each side, we have a scoreboard, green scoreboard for the green team, yellow scoreboard for the yellow team. And this is this is uniform across all of our designed slightly differently, but uniform in terms of its practicality across all of our worlds. Then what we have is we have a build area. So you've got the yellow hive and you have this giant build area. And you'll notice when I'm in the world, um, so that's because I'm in WB. When I'm in teacher mode, uh, sorry, student mode, I can't do anything to this world. It's completely immutable, except inside here, I can build whatever I want because of the allow blocks. And so the only area that they can build in is inside there. You'll also notice that if I try to go in there right now, I am not assigned a team. 
So if Steven, I Steven, hang on one second. Sorry, because mm. I'm still um, I'm showing my screen. So now that I finally ah. got this up, I'll I'll have you do a quick pause and then you can walk through folks again. All right. So everyone, I've got a sign up sheet here. Before I open up the floodgates on this publicly shared spreadsheet, I want you to take a peek. At the left hand side, I have 30 accounts. Why 30? Because that's how many we can have join in our hosted multiplayer world. Me. That includes Pardon? me, so 29 technically. Oh yeah, there you go. I'll take away 30. So do not just sign up because you might boot each other, everybody out. So I do need you to come into the sheet and we'll have two rounds. So fast and furious, put your name by, if you want to be multiplayer 23, just put your name there and then nobody else try to sign in to multiplayer 23. Okay, let me give you this link. Don't just go sign it in just yet. We need a semblance of order. Let's see if we can't get in here. Educators assemble. Crystal and Steven, Brad, we'll show um, the game back. You should all see now yeah. my screen with the multiplayer shine up, sign up. Thanks, Natalia. I should see people starting to join me. Let me know if this link works. Let's give it a go. Yeah, Steven. Before, I see Wendy people just in there. Up. Perfect. Get your name in. Whichever name you sign up, don't take someone else's. Um, and I do. I will get rid of 30 then. Let me get rid of that. Don't go in there. Stephen, before Wendy took over um, for this round, we weren't being able to see your screen when you were presenting. Yeah, we'll restart. We'll, we'll have them restart from the beginning on that. Thanks, Adam. Sure, thanks. All right, good. We got Bradley signed up for multiplayer one. James is multiplayer nine. Sarah's multiplayer eight. Let's get those signups in. Karen is multiplayer 19. Once you put your name there, now go back into your Minecraft Education Edition. You're going to probably need to log out because you were on your school account. Log mm -hmm. back in as multiplayer 12 or whoever you had. Uh, password is uh, multiplayer exclamation mark. I believe that's a capital M. I hope so. If not, try it not capital M, but pretty sure it is. So get those in. Log in. I'm going to give just another 30 seconds. It looks like we might all be able to get in. This is good. And remember, just like we do with our digital citizenship and collaborative lesson building and playing, yes, you might accidentally delete somebody's things, but these are all teachable moments, right? So instead, we don't want to take away the chance to collaborate. We just teach all the things that could go wrong. Awesome. There's Pedro. Get your name down. 30 seconds left. Don't take someone else's. Multiplayer 27 is still open. Remember, do not log in unless you took that one because you're going to boot somebody. We don't want to boot anyone today. Multiplayer 16, 17, 18, still open. Get those names in. Multiplayer 3 is still open. Make sure you put your name down. Multiplayer 5, still open. Got it. Do one double check. So if you're Donna, you should be 4. Just do a double check and make sure which one you have. And now I'm going to stop sharing my screen, everybody. That's it. Final call for how you get your login and password. Final call for questions. All right, I'm going to stop sharing. Let's start from scratch now that you have your um, your username and password, folks. Log in, and now Stephen's going to tell us what the join code is and how to join us in the Bees Esports world. Let's start from scratch. All right, I'm unsharing now, Stephen, so go for it. And Stephen, if you wouldn't mind, could you just share Minecraft so your chat doesn't pop up on the screen? Because I think the chat takes uh, covers up the game if you're sharing both. I usually only share one. You mean like this? Yeah, I think so. Yep, that way we couldn't see because when you pressed uh, Teams before it took. Yeah, I use it. It's just so I can Perfect. keep an eye on the chat. Otherwise, so it's only when you're sharing that I do that. Okay, so what we're going to do is um, what? So I sorry, I was. I'll start again. So over here, we not only do we have this garden with things hidden in it. Um, that the kids can go and find just for fun, but we also have most significantly the mechanics, and the mechanics are the timer in front. Um, Again, as, as I said before, these are uniform across all of our worlds, maybe just designed a little uh, slightly differently, but they all have a timer. And then they all have a scoring system, yellow versus green. Green matches this uh, area here and yellow matches this area here. And you can't, you'll notice that they're inside this box, this 32 by 32 by 32 box. And I noticed that someone earlier on said, can you 3D print? In all of them, you can. The 3D print world, you can as well. But here's the structure block, and that's the space that we're gonna we're gonna see people build in. Um, and so, yes, you'll also notice that because I am in student mode, I can't do anything to this world. 
I can't destroy anything except I can place inside that space because it has allow blocks on it. OK, and well, so anywhere can I, can I stop you real quick. Sorry, I think a couple people got your join code, but some didn't. Are you uh, do you want to stop and give join code and then yeah, have everyone gather around with instructions? Real and, carrot and as panda. Stephen's doing this, everyone just notice his best practices, right? For if you wanted to just kind of teach aloud Stephen on how you might do the same exact thing when you have your kids join you. Are you getting on a team's call to debrief? Um, tell us a little bit about how you what I've showed the technical part of giving everyone logins and getting them to the world. And then if you can talk a little bit about um, what you do as a kind of esports um, teacher, how you how you get everyone acquainted with what's going on. Yeah, yeah, OK, I'll do that as I, I just want to do an introduction to like the mechanics for those still watching. But you, I think so that some people are joining and they missed the join code. So if we could give everyone just a minute to get caught up so they don't feel left out. Let's give everyone maybe maybe 60 seconds to come join. So he's going to leave that up there one more time for everyone. You've got. Great. I'll drop that in the screen as well. Remember, we talked on Monday and Tuesday about methods to get the join code out. So, right, you could screenshot, you could put it in a document with the instructions for esports before it goes out. Perfect. Last call. Anyone else need help joining? Everyone, again, if you, I still have a couple accounts still left. So, everyone who wants to should be able to log in. Looks like I still have 18 open and 16 open. But everyone else should be. We should get a full class for you tonight. Perfect. I have an issue looking up your account. Christina, we'll, you might want to try another one that's open. Could be 16. Adam and Kyla and I will help you troubleshoot. Um, but all right, awesome. I think you've got everybody joined and ready to go. Take it away, Stephen. Thanks for the quick pause. Thank you. OK, so um, what we've now got is we've got, so you'll, you'll notice for those who are still watching and those who are in the game, you could just minimize the game and watch the stream for the moment while I... Uh, while I show you the, yeah, people are pressing buttons already. So don't anybody press anything. <laughs> don't anybody press anything. Thank you. Um, and then what we're going to do is, and don't worry, this is a good, this, this happens. And what it, it happens. And all I do is I just say to the kids, I'd like you to start up here where Steve 22 is. Steve 22 is being good. So jump up on the top here for me, up on the top. Good, 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 good. Thanks, everyone. Yay. And then just what to do is minimize the game and I will show you uh, minimize the game and watch the stream and I'll show you the mechanics. So what I want to do is uh, I, so I'll show you that I can't do anything and the kids aren't able to do anything either or the players who have just come into the world. Um, but what they can do is build inside this area because this is where they're intended to build and this will always be identified as your build area. Then you'll notice that down here you've got a glass space. Glass is our voting mechanism. So if you keep an eye on that score over yellow, over by yellow, when I land on this, it goes to one. So the presence of me there means I am giving my vote as a score. And as good practice, we do this two ways, especially with the South Africans, we did it both ways. You can either have people who are assigned to vote and the score goes up to nine. So you need a rubric that kind of gives you a nine count at max. Or you can also use a thing in your inventory called an armor stand. And this is usually left for the teacher. And the teacher will normally, in teacher mode, so I'm going to just go WB, can normally go, OK, we're going to do one for, we're going to give you a point for your scale. You had great use of color. I loved the way that you did the parrot. You know, it was so realistic. You had great leadership. Your communication in the team was fantastic. Um, I loved how you troubleshot and resolved some of the issues that you had, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then you give them that score. And then the other team might only get eight or seven. And that's based on rubrics. And, and Kuro, the school system that we worked with in South Africa, developed a huge number of rubrics that went with it. So depending on what it was they were trying to teach, they had these, and they were really, they were simple rubrics. It was just aspect, to what degree did they did they meet that aspect? How many points did they get? Um, it's usually just one point per aspect. So things like color, scale, um, realism, you know, realistic. Redstone was one of them. Did you use redstone engineering, etc.? And then what we do is over here, there's a series of buttons. And if you keep an eye on the timer for me, everyone, 
keep an eye and in, including those in the game, you can now keep an eye on the timer. If I click on add 10 minutes, whoops, I'm just going to reset the game because that was last time, right? If I click on add 10 minutes, you'll see that it now goes to 10. The timer goes to 10. So it flashes up on the front of my screen, but it also goes there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add, I always add two minutes just so that we've got a little admin at the beginning. And then down here, uh, before I go to any of you can also take away 10 minutes and you can remove by one minute increments. But over here, you'll see that there's a yellow area and there's a green area. So I'm just going to tell Steve one to go and stand on the yellow area for me, please. Good, whichever one you are. And I'm going to ask anyone on. So anyone on. I think I'm going to do it this way. So anyone on the on my left, on my right needs to go stand on yellow down by the, the spawn area with Steve one. So that would be Steve two, Alex nine, anybody on my right at this point. And then anybody on my left, including Steve 25 and Alex 13, Steve three, you go on green. Now, of course, this is difficult for us because we're, I'm just trying to, yep, Steve 25, you go on, you go on yellow. So Alex seven, you're gonna go on green. Alex 14, you're gonna go on green. Steve three, you're gonna go on green. Alex 13, you're going to go on green. And Steve 4, you're going to go on yellow. Steve 25 on yellow. And you can see the kids start to, and you're, you're my students at this point, so I'm calling you students or kids, and you're going to be in your area. So that's it. Just choose a team. Lovely. And we still got four people not moving around. I don't know if they're just watching the stream or. There we are. Alex 13's woken up. Welcome, Alex. <laughs> so you jump on green for me down here. There we are. And then we've got who's Steve three, Alex 14 and Steve four. We need to make a start. Alex, Steve four's woken up. Follow me, follow me. <laughs> and you're going to land on yellow. Now, what you can do is you can you can teleport. There are commands and we won't go into it for time, but there are commands where you can say teleport this player to here, these players to here or all players down here, for example. And that's fine. So, Steve, could you stand on yellow for me? Steve four. You could stand on yellow. There we are, and then we'll leave the other two up there for the moment. Now, provided you are standing on green, not floating above it and not jumping, Alex 22, <laughs> uh, what will happen is when I press start, green will all go over to green, yellow will go over to yellow, and you will be instructed to build something in that space. And what we're gonna build today is we're gonna build a giant bee. Now, I'll, I'll explain while you're playing, because we'll have a few minutes to do that, um, why I did that. But there are other things we can talk about in terms of building. So you're ready, set, go. And you'll notice, anybody watching, everyone's gone. But the yellow team are in here and the green team are over here. And they're going to have to get themselves together and they're going to have to build. Now, that's more complicated when you can't talk. I get it. So somebody just make a start, just make some bees <laughs> and just make a start. And then others will tend to build off it. But when we've got the kids in their team's environment, they're able to talk and play together and communicate. And there's usually a leader and a coach and someone. Uh, we've got an amazing soundbite from South Africa where one of the kids is like, I'm really not feeling this. I wonder if we could start again. <laughs> And he does. Um, he just starts again. And it was great because he kind of led the team to his, through his idea. It's great leadership. So off you go. So you've got, you can see the timer for those watching. You've got, I can always knock a minute off this. I just worry about admin sometimes. So I add an extra minute, but we got 11 minutes and six. I'm actually just going to knock a minute off. Actually, we've got about six minutes left on this webinar. So maybe we want to boost this to three, three minutes to finish the B. <laughs> okay. Let's make it. And we can Sorry, always folks. recap. Tomorrow is a collaborative yeah. world building. So we can recap. Even do oh, another world to kick off in the morning. We'll see. Yeah. So Steve three, if you could go inside yellow. Are you not allowed inside yellow now? No, we've got two people outside. I know. So Steve three, um, come with me. Follow me back to the beginning, Steve. Steve three standing on the glass. Look, he just keeps trying to get in there. He's like a bee banging himself off a window. Look. Like a bee trying to escape the living room. <laughs> Behind you, Steve. Behind you, Steve three. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to teleport him over here. So I'm going to do forward slash TP Steve three. There we are to Stephen R. Boom. Right, Steve, stay there. Don't move. Don't move. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do that again. And it just means everybody restarts. So Steve's now in there. Everybody got sent to the middle, but that's fine. And then who else minutes, are we missing? Uh... So let's do the same with Alex. Come on over, Alex. Whoops, you're going to have to fly. We've got two minutes. And then Alex, if you stand on green for me, come down here and stand on green. And you'll see what I'm doing. It's a bit of a pain for the people that are in because they'll get reset to the middle, but that's okay. If we just stand on green and then I'm just going to press this button. Pop. And that's how we reallocate any stragglers. Sometimes though, I have to be strict and say, we're not doing that because the kids know the rules and they were late this morning. And so I'm like, I'm sorry you were late and the game started and we have to stick to rules like that. It's part of that practicum vocation um, practice. So you've got 45 seconds to finish your bees. I know it wasn't a huge amount of time, but man, they're it's getting good. something. They're getting they're something. Getting something. <laughs> Ooh. Pretty amazing the teamwork that's happening with a little communication. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. Ten seconds. Now I'm just going to go into the structure block and you can see this is ready to be printed or put on a on a um, uh, virtual reality, mixed reality, paint 3D. It can go anywhere. Now you'll notice that the time has stopped and everyone's been taken out. And yes, they're all going to stand on the glass because they want the maximum vote. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to get them to all come to here. So to do that, I'm going to go TP at A and then I'm going to go Stephen R. And they'll all come up to the top and that's TP at A Stephen R. And I'd like you to stay there, everyone. All players stay there. And then what I can do is I have two minutes and you can always assign more by just clicking the more button, uh, the up and down button. But I'm just going to say this is fantastic. There's actually multiple bees. I can see this one's actually giant and has legs. There's a mini baby bee, which is cute. No redstone, but there's honey in front of it. So I'm just going to, and now I'm just making this up as I go along. There's even glass wings. So that's great. Let's head over to this one. We're on this one. I'm going to say this one's dead. <laughs> so, so this one is kind of like, it's dead or drunk. Um, and that's fine. It's got full wings. So I'm going to give you points for that. And I love its little leg. I love its little legs. Um, yeah. And I Those think legs that, are super cute. It's Could I ask like you, um, since some folks already started to do it in the chat, we talked in the beginning about showing assessment. Stephen, I'll talk a bit about assessment again, but could I just get to be eligible to win our door prize today? If you were able to get in, go ahead and screenshot your beautiful bee or your yeah. contribution to the bee. And, or even if you couldn't even move today, that's okay. This is all a lab and a playtime. So let's see those screenies come in. Oh, beautiful. I love it. Thank you, Karen. And in the last 20 seconds, let me just show one of the mechanics. None of you will be able to go back in now. I can't go into your area. I get taken here and none of you will be able to go back in either. Um, the vote is 6-4, just so we know. But yeah, you all get taken to the to the glass area. And so there's no griefing. Children can't go in afterwards and get rid of stuff or add stuff. There's no cheating. Once the time's up, the time's up. So we've built all of the mechanics so that esports just works for you. And then we're going to get a little thing here that says yellow team wins. So congratulations, yellow team. I mean, that was purely subjective and it was based on my vote. But if you had a rubric built in and you had time to go through that, as the Kuro schools did, you end up with a league and you end up with definitive scoring systems and you can do average scores. Now, here's the thing. Now, all I'm going to do is get rid of the only thing I need to do now is I need to just get rid of the scores. I go over back to the middle and I say reset game, which takes my timer back. And then that's only saying one because someone's standing on it. And then what we do is we start again. And the next time the players go in, they, they go over to this box at the back of their building area and they press a button that says clear build. And then they go in and they can clear it and it's all theirs. So resetting the game, you can do this over and over and over again. You've got five leagues, five matches in one league. You just use the same world over and over and over again. So let's move on. I'm going to stop hosting. Well done. And we're going to do a very, very quick one more. Is that right? No, I think we've got to wrap it up. But we've let's do it, it tomorrow if we can, everyone. Yeah, let's do another um, one tomorrow. We have uh, we have our collaborative world building tomorrow, but we can definitely can start out with that because you can tell us how you built this world yeah. together. Look at all these bees. I'm going to pick really quick. We've got two winners. One 
from our Twitter. Remember, why don't you put a nice um, tweet out of your creation? I, I People are so proud of the legs that they built, Stephen. Um, mm -hmm. We've got, okay, our winner. I'm scrolling through, and it looks like our winner for today on Twitter. Oh, goodness, who is it going to be? It is... Grazie Matrazo. Um, you are a Twitter winner. And then our, please email if you want mcedu at, at microsoft.com. I'll drop that in. Our chat winner today is going to be none other than Ian Lindsay. That's a great screenshot of your Bumble. Um, email to win your prize. Um, if everyone could unmute and give a thank you, Stephen, today, let's hear it for one, two, three. Thank you. Our game master extraordinary. As you can see, Stephen, we should really be booking these for five hour blocks. I don't know what we were thinking of one hour, but we if, if we could ever steal you for an entire evening, we'll need to do that sometime. And we, I know Stephen will should, also drop where you can just watch him play with Play Matters. So there's all sorts there, yeah. of ways to stay in touch with Stephen. Um, your homework, everybody, is now you know how to get those worlds. I've dropped in those um, make worlds in there. So you can open up bees and just take a breath all by yourself, walk through, <laughs> click the buttons, pretend you have 30 people in there with you, and just start to think, what would I do if I were having my students build two bees? So that's your homework. Come back tomorrow with Stephen with questions, um, and we'll see if we can't kick off tomorrow um, with one more round before getting into collaborative world building. How's yeah. that sound, Stephen? Amazing. I've put the Twitch TV Play Matters. I Twitch every, I, I do Minecraft every Monday, Wednesday, Friday um, in the evenings on Play Matters on twitch.tv. Check me out. Bradley says, this was my first experience in esports and Minecraft and it has cleared up so many questions. Already. I love that, Bradley, um, right? So Learning by doing, right? Until you do mm -hmm. something like this, it doesn't really click. We hope it clicked for you because the, the minute it does, if you guys see all the excitement going in the chat, it's the same level of joy and excitement that your students are going to have. So huge yeah. thank you, Stephen. Um, I'd write like down to any questions for Stephen. He'll stick around for a few in the chat if you have any, but we'll stop the recording now. Thank you, Stephen. And yeah. thank you to Adam and Kyle and team for um, all of your support in the channel. Uh, we'll have our playlist for you to watch back. And of course, our multiplayer setup guide and our the esports OneNote from Stephen. Thanks, everyone. Mm -hmm. No worries. And I'll just um, say, South Africa, Kuro in South Africa are looking for international competition. They're now on their second league. They have incredible teams doing incredible stuff and we would like them to compete internationally. So if you think you could get a league up and running and maybe six months time from now, you could be competing with South Africa. Let's make Ooh. it happen. I think the Netherlands are ready. I know Richard and, and team are, are, are chomping at the bit to represent Team Holland. So let's do this. Let's make it happen. <laughs> Thanks, David. No problem.